And I also love the world that he gave that his includes only you, Maggie. Son. That means he gave up Jesus for you. That whosoever would believe on him would not die, would not perish, but have everlasting life. That's for you. You can be a whosoever. So have faith in God. And then when you believe in your heart that you have already received, then you have it. Now, for some people, that's really hard because you've got symptoms that say, well, you're not healed yet, you're not healed yet, you're not healed yet. They keep screaming at you. So what you need to do is put aside those symptoms and say, well, when were my sins forgiven? What was it? Was it 2,000 years ago when Jesus died on the cross? And, and if your answer to that is, yeah, that's when they were forgiven. You know, you have to appropriate that forgiveness. You have to say, I believe that. And then then you get it. Well, when were you healed? Well, at the same time, it's by his stripes that we were healed, is what the Bible says. So it happened already, but you appropriated it when you believe it right in the here and now. So that prayer, come to him believing, have faith in God, and then say, I believe in the sacrifice of Jesus. I believe that that governs me. I pray now that the kingdom of heaven would come, that the will of God would be done in my body as it is in heaven. In heaven, it's real easy to believe. There's nobody sick. There's nobody in pain. We're supposed to command that to happen right here on earth. Ashley and I are going to do that. Before we do that, here's some other miracles. Here's April from Louisiana. She was at home watching the 700 Club, and she heard Ashley, the anointed one, pray. I'm recording this because I also am a walking miracle. I also broke my back and couldn't feel from the waist down, and I also reached out to somebody for prayer. In my case, I only reached out to one person. It was my brother in Christ, chosen the disciple, a gospel rapper on Instagram, and we prayed in agreement and two days later I met my goal of walking on a prayer rock um, a, like a Jericho walk event around the Sacramento State Capitol um, two days after I was in the emergency room this prayer walk was scheduled and I wanted to go so bad it was so important to me to go and stand up for God in the Sacramento Capitol, in the government, and literally march around the building just declaring, you know, God is in this place. God is in control. God is sovereign even over the government, even over the state capitol, even over the decisions that are made there for the city that I was born. Um, I come from Sacramento and I, um, I wanted to go to this prayer walk, but two days prior I was in the emergency room and a spine specialist came and spoke to me and told me that I might need emergency surgery and that he was going to hopefully avoid the surgery by giving me steroids instead. And we prayed, and I spent the night praying and singing, and I drove all the people in the emergency room absolutely crazy with my worship, and they kicked me out, and I wasn't healed, and I didn't know what to do. I went home, um, I picked up my steroid prescription on the way, in the middle of the night on 24 hours after being released from the hospital, I woke up in the middle of the night to take my steroid medication on time, and this time I finally got around to reading the paperwork, and I saw in the uh, drug side effects that bone weakness was one of the listed side effects, and I realized that they had given me this drug to treat a fracture in my spine, and I was angry and I renounced the medication. I renounced the pharmacia, my involvement in witchcraft from taking the pharma pharmacia. Pharmacia or pharmacopia rather is the Greek word 
for witchcraft or sorcery and it's literally the root word of pharmacy pharmaceutical and i i knew that from studying in a christian revival environment when i had first met jesus i came straight out of witchcraft into revival and i had no experience in between with dry christianity or religiosity or churchianity as they call it whatsoever and none of that i just went straight from practicing good magic straight into revival walking in healing and deliverance and miracles and spiritual warfare prayers from the beginning um, under the guidance of pastor uh, rob stark and pastor the other guy's name i forget mostly rob stark though was my pastor at the lamplighter revival center in el cajon and also rick and maria signs at red seal ministries in san diego and those were the two ministries that i studied under and through them i met pastor wayne clark retired navy admiral and of course um dr caroline leaf phd and i started learning all of these things actually i have my textbook right here um from his dwelling place ministries from dr wayne clark um this is an extremely rare book if you can find a copy of, of it on the internet i highly recommend that you buy it if you are a believer in jesus and you are willing to not only cast the demons out and sweep your house clean but also fill it up with the holy spirit again because it's a dangerous thing to kick demons out and not invite the holy spirit in so you don't want to play with danger the supernatural world is quite real and the principles in the bible are quite real and this spiritual teaching overlaps 100 percent with not only scriptures hi doggy but also um what we have learned in the last 30 years of breakthroughs in neuroscience, human physiology, fields like epigenetics and neuroplasticity. And so using what we understand about the human body, the limbic system, the, <clears throat> the immune system, the digestive system, the nervous system, and the way that the mind works and understanding the mind body connection or the body mind connection um, thousands of scientists worldwide have come to agree that you cannot separate the words mind and body or body and mind they combine it into one word and sometimes some scientists will say body mind and others will say mind body but the point is they're inseparable and so as Dr. Leaf teaches, our mind has control over our brain. And then our brain is a physical thing. And so we have the ability to make choices over our mind or with our mind over our brain. She says, if a brain is on a plate, does it do anything? No. The brain is doing something in the human body because our mind is able to make conscious choices. And it is with that conscious mind or the human will that we've been given that we are able to choose life according to Deuteronomy. I, behold, I have set before you blessings and curses, life and death. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live. And then neuroscience, neuroscience has discovered that um, the field of epigenetics is like saying, no, your genetics are not concrete from birth. You have the ability to make choices about your genetics and different genes can be flipped on the on switch or the off switch depending on the choices that you make in life. And those choices are subsequently passed on up to four generations. And this is both scientific and biblical. And you begin understanding this field of study, the spiritual roots of disease and... Um, <clears throat> understanding and believing the promises of God and healing is possible. And I had, I knew all this before I broke my back, praise God, bless God. So when I was in the 
hospital, I turned to prayer, and when I saw the paperwork about the pharmaco pharmacopoeia, I renounced it. I threw it away. And the next morning, I got up and I walked, and I drove myself to the California State Capitol, and I attended the event. Let me go get my t-shirt so you can see what the event was, because this is my testimony right here. You gotta put on the whole armor of God while you're getting dressed. Oh, sorry about my underwear. Anyway, it was called, Let Everything That Has Breath Praise the Lord Revival 2020. Let Everything That Has Breath Praise the Lord Revival 2020. And now, if you go back on my YouTube um, history, you can see this is July 18th, 2020. You can see from prior to this date, um, earlier than that, I believe in July, possibly in June of 2020, I have a video uploaded where I woke up early one morning and felt compelled by the Holy Spirit of God to start interceding for America. And I went into the kitchen and opened my Bible to Psalm 150 randomly, wasn't familiar with the scripture, and started reading it, um, actually singing it. And um, my boyfriend at the time, who's now my husband, was sleeping and got bothered by my singing and prayers. And I went into the bathroom and continued singing and praying. And you can see all of this part of my testimony back in time on my YouTube. So, <clears throat> tell me that God isn't real when I turned to Psalm 150 first before I went to the hospital. And what does it say in Psalm 150? Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. It's a very short psalm. It's like one paragraph, like maybe three sentences. Praise him with the harp and cymbal or whatever. It's like a little tiny psalm about praise and worship. So that's what happened first. And then I went to the hospital and then I prayed for a miracle. And then I renounced the pharmacopoeia. And then I walked to the event, which I didn't know the name of. And that when I got there, they told me the name of the event was Let Everything That Has Breath Praise the Lord Revival 2020. And I even received a free t-shirt because I didn't have much. Actually, on my way there to that um, event, I had seen a homeless tent community on the side of the road, like circa around Madison and 80, I think it was. Um, somewhere in like the Citrus Heights part of Sacramento along the 80 freeway and I saw um, I saw a couple of people living in tents on the side of the road and I pulled over and I went over there and I opened up my trunk and I found some things that were useful to give them I didn't have any money to give but I had some things I forget what it was like maybe a blanket or a tarp or I don't know something like that and um, this homeless man gave me money he gave me money for gas. He gave me $20 for gas. And that was a miracle. And that was a testimony to show that the last will be first. And the meek shall inherit the earth. And that the, the humility and the kindness and the servant's heart of people who are considered outcasts by society and have-nots by society are actually very blessed by God. I mean, in order to know what it's like to struggle, you have a generous heart. And that's why I've always had a generous heart. When I am able to give, I give. And, um, you know, when you have two shirts, you give one. And when you have one shirt, you don't because you need to wear your shirt. <laughs> but that's just the principle that I live by. So read Matthew 6, 25 through 34 you have a hard time remembering all that just look to Matthew 6 and read the whole thing and it basically says that you can count on God for provision and for everything because he knows everything that you need and also don't forget in the book of Jeremiah that you were knit together in your mother's womb that God chose you and knit you together he knew you before he formed you and he knows how many hairs you have on your head 
And so your mind has control of your body. You can use your mind as an act of your free will to submit under God's will and ask or even command your body to come into alignment with God's will and into the plan that he has for your body and the design that he has for your life and speak that over yourself. Speak life, choose life so that you may live and so that your descendants may be blessed up to a thousand generations according to the word of God. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.